previously. Upon reviewing your testimony and available footage, and the confession of the late Dr. Alexei, it is the unanimous agreement of the O5 that you are to be terminated for your part in the gross breach of SCP-096. Given the incident's scope and potential, the O5 have approved your request for the termination of SCP-096. Given the lack of personnel with understanding of SCP-096, the termination will be entrusted to you. Six months later, 27. There have been 27 attempts on SCP-096's life in the past six months, all directed by the man who set him free, Dr. Daniels. Daniels, for his part, has spent the last six months in a cell. On a good day, he is escorted to the test chambers to oversee an attempt, and then back to his cell. His termination has been delayed in order to allow him to oversee the destruction of SCP-096. But the O5s are losing their patience. Dr. Daniels is a condemned man. But if all he can do is fail, well, they have plenty of other people who can handle this project. He has a month left. Regardless of his results, at the end of that month he will be terminated. These are his last days and last attempts to take SCP-096 with him. Dr. Daniels and Dr. Carver's conversation. Did it work? 682 skin 096 and dissolved its flesh with acid. The bones were not affected though. It is actually quite astounding. Yeah, he's a real miracle. Perhaps you can treat this with a bit more seriousness. You know they're gonna kill me once we get this right, yeah? I think a little sarcasm is a small price to pay for my sanity. You killed hundreds of people. These are the consequences. I didn't kill anyone. That thing killed them. I just showed you what was possible. I feel like we're getting off topic. Fine. Wait. The statue. What are you talking about? You said its bones were still intact. Breaking bones is what 173 does. You want to cross and test with an object you can't look at, with an object you have to look at. The logistics alone would be... Do you think it's a bad idea? I think most of what you say is a bad idea. This is perhaps one of the more promising ones. The Presentation Dr. Daniel stands at the centre of a large room. The tension in the room is palpable. Dr. Daniels can almost feel the hate of the scientists, agents and command council members when they glance in his direction. Regardless, he takes a step back and motions to the screen behind him. SCP-096 has proven much more difficult to destroy than we previously had considered. You've been briefed in our previous attempts. As he speaks, the screen behind Dr. Daniels flips through numerous images of SCP-096 as seen from behind. Each shows SCP-096 with various amounts and types of inflicted damage. Fire. Radiation. Kinetic force. Our most recent test involved SCP-682 and it was also unsuccessful. In every test, regardless of the damage dealt to the rest of it, SCP-096's bones survive unscathed. An image of a broken drill bit appears on the screen behind Dr. Daniels. We've even attempted to drill into the skull through the ocular sockets, but have been unsuccessful. Every single test has shown that SCP-096's bones are completely indestructible. There is a pause, and then an image of a broken vertebrae appears on the screen. Until yesterday, a small murmur rises from the crowd. SCP-173 was exposed to SCP-096 and successfully broke its spine into two pieces between the fourth and fifth vertebrae. The image of a hole ripped into the side of a metal wall appears on the screen behind Dr. Daniels. Now, of course, after five hours of having its neck snapped, things went a little sideways, but recovery was accomplished fairly quickly, and you are now one step closer to being able to punish me. Congratulations. No one laughs. Termination Dr. Daniels screamed at the agents from a nearby observation room as they connected a pipe to the now broken and open bones. Hold him! SCP-096's marrow spilled slightly around the edges of the pipe as the hooked nozzle was latched into place. 
SCP-096 screamed and flailed as the pipe began to pump hydrofluoric acid directly into both the body and brain cavity of the monster. Acid bubbled out of the creature's mouth and the bag they'd placed on its head smoked before dissolving away completely. The thing's face, at once terrifying and pained, was melting away before their eyes. The agent's attempts to keep it pinned down now failed completely. It reached its hands up to cover its melting face. A face they had all just looked at. A single voice called out from the opposite side of the room from the agents surrounding SCP-173. Blinking. Then a low gurgling scream began in SCP-096's throat. It rose in pitch and volume gradually until it was a deafening screech. The agents let the thing go and moved to the walls. Other agents moved slightly closer and leveled their weapons. The monster's skin began to fall away into a puddle on the floor. Its gut began to burst and acid flew out in small spray in all directions. The agents had facial protection from the acid but nothing to protect them from seeing its face. SCP-096 dropped its hands to its side. It looked up at one of the agents, reached out, and began to run. The agents opened fire. For the first time, and perhaps the last, bullets sank into the thing's body and bones. The first volley shattered the collarbone and threw the monster onto its back. It tried to get up, but the fire continued. They fired methodically up and down its body, starting with its legs, and ending with its shattered, dissolving head. When they were done, there was nothing left but a pool of acid, gore, and rage, spreading slowly across the containment floor. A voice called out again. Blinking. The agents at Dr. Daniel's sides each grabbed one of his shoulders, a third put him into handcuffs, and they led him out of the room. His task was now complete. And there we have it everyone. That was my interpretation of how to terminate SCP-096 and it's all thanks to SCP-173. It's quite fitting I think as well seeing as all SCPs fear 173 even 682. Uh, I would like to say a thank you to Simon for returning as the voice of Dr. Carver and again thank you to Dr. Samirian for lending his writing skills for this episode. Uh, you can find channel links for him uh, in below in the description. Now, this is the end of Season 2, guys, so what that means is now I'm going to be taking a week away from drawing just to recharge and research new SCPs to do in the next season. Uh, there will be a video going up soon celebrating one year of SCP Illustrated, and I've got some airsoft footage I might try and find some time to put together to make another MTF video. Uh, there's also going to be a trailer at some point letting you in on some of the amazing videos that are going to be coming your way in Season 3. Um, I'd like to extend my thanks to all the amazing people that I've collaborated with over the last few months and to all of you for viewing and subscribing. Uh, the channel has grown to heights I never thought possible and I'm going to keep working at it. And of course I need to give incredible thank yous to all of the patrons who so generously support the channel and my, myself and keep the content coming. Um, if you did want to join the patrons for exclusive sketches, behind the scenes footage and exclusive videos then you can find the links below. And thank you to Fabian, Stefu, Adro Figens, Grant Lasher, Sambi, Sugarfree Shane, and Kava Moran. Big thanks to Eric, SCP-105, Montgomery, Andre Bashert, The Unobstructive Group, and El Spudman. And huge thanks to Matthew and Simon. Thank you all so much for watching and for being with me for another season. And I'll see you all soon. And as always, guys, take care.